When we think of climate change, we generally think of the loss of iconic species, like the skinny polar bear on an ice flow. We don't often think of the microorganisms beneath these flows and their ability to affect global nutrient processes, but perhaps we should. Global climate change is affecting the ocean on a number of different levels. Three things that are going to change in the ocean are temperature, pH level, and carbonate ion concentration, all of which are critical to many marine organisms. The temperature of the ocean has already increased by approximately 0.6 degrees Celsius over the last 100 years. The temperature is predicted to increase an additional 1 to 3 degrees by the end of the century. Increased atmospheric CO2 concentrations decrease the pH of seawater and the carbonate ion concentration. What we don't know yet is whether these changes will enhance or decrease the ocean's ability to store carbon. Currently, the ocean acts as a major storage place, holding approximately one-third of anthropogenic or human-released carbon, carbon that could otherwise contribute to the greenhouse gas effect and amplify global warming. This project focuses on how climate change is going to affect two marine eukaryotic organisms, diatoms and coccolithophores. These organisms will respond in different yet interacting ways. Changes in these organisms will affect carbon cycling and sequestration. Within the ocean, there are four conceptual carbon pumps that mix carbon, create a gradient, and are responsible for sequestering carbon deep in the ocean for thousands of years. The four pumps are the solubility pump, the carbonate pump, the biological carbon pump, and the microbial carbon pump. This project will focus largely on the biological carbon pump. The first step in the biological carbon pump is photosynthesis and the fixation of atmospheric CO2 by phytoplankton. This carbon is then transported to the deep ocean as sinking organic particles, for example, dead organisms and excrement. Most of this carbon is converted back to CO2 by microbial decomposition and respiration. It is temporarily sequestered in the ocean until a mixing of the ocean causes it to escape to the surface. Some organic carbon becomes part of the sediment or is stored deep in the ocean for thousands of years. So how will climate change affect the biological carbon pump? With climate change, there will be changes in the abundance of diatoms and coccolithophores, which have the potential to alter the biological carbon pump's sequestration abilities. Diatoms are microscopic eukaryotic phytoplankton that live inside a silica, aka glass, structure. Diatoms play a major role in the biological carbon pump as they account for up to 20 to 25 percent of global primary production, which means they are responsible for a huge portion of carbon fixation. A recent plankton survey in the North Atlantic and the North Sea found that diatoms appear to like warmer water temperatures and turbulence, which may give them an advantage with climate change. Diatoms in this area have become more widespread and abundant in the past decade and have extended high abundance during the summer. However, diatoms have a low carbon saturation capacity, which means they will not be able to photosynthesize more efficiently at higher CO2 concentrations. Climate change might therefore lead to an increase in diatom abundance, but their rate of carbon fixation will remain the same. An increase in diatom abundance might lead to more CO2 entering the biological carbon pump. Much of this CO2 is trapped only briefly, but some will fall to depths or be converted into a form where it will be sequestered for a long time. When diatom blooms die off, they produce large transparent aggregates of particulate organic matter. Exactly how these aggregates contribute to carbon cycling or sequestration is unclear, but could be important. Diatoms have the potential to impact the biological carbon pump and increase carbon sequestration, but uncertainties remain as to how they will react to climate change and how much they will contribute to carbon sequestration. Alternatively, coccolithophores, another group of marine phytoplankton, may outcompete diatoms and make a greater contribution to the biological carbon pump. Coccolithophores are microscopic eukaryotic phytoplankton that create calcium carbonate shells. Unlike diatoms, they are able to increase their photosynthetic efficiency at higher CO2 concentrations. This has allowed them to outcompete diatoms under experimental conditions. An increase in coccolithophores could lead to less or more carbon sequestration. The process they use to generate food, photosynthesis, leads to more carbon sequestration, 
while the process they use to generate their shells, calcification, releases CO2. For each mole of calcium carbonate created, 0.6 moles of CO2 are released into the surrounding water and the atmosphere. Additionally, the falling of these shells to the deep ocean can lead to carbon sequestration. Blooms of coccolithophores have been associated with another greenhouse gas, sulfur. As coccolithophores age, it appears that they leak a form of sulfur. This process is not yet fully understood. The ocean accounts for up to 50% of non-human sulfur emissions, largely from coccolithophores. Overall, an increase in coccolithophores due to climate change may create a positive feedback loop enhancing the impacts of climate change. However, increased CO2 concentrations are expected to harm organisms' abilities to calcify. This would mean that coccolithophores wouldn't be able to form their calcium carbonate shells. The exact function of these shells is unclear, which makes it hard to determine how this might affect their abundance of climate change. More efficient photosynthesis may help coccolithophores flourish, but their shells may be weakened, so it is unclear if coccolithophore abundance will increase with climate change. Part of the answer to who will compete who and become most abundant in the ocean as the climate changes may already be appearing. Similarly to the findings of small scale experiments, coccolithophores may be outcompeting diatoms because of their increased photosynthetic capacity. The evidence for this comes from the materials they use to build their shells. As mentioned previously, diatoms create a silica structure while coccolithophores create a calcium carbonate shell. The ratio of opal, a form of silica, to carbonate is often used as a proxy for the relative abundance of diatoms compared to coccolithophores. There has been a decrease in the silica to carbonate ratio across the entire North Atlantic. This decrease is, is attributed to climate change and an increase in coccolithophores relative to diatoms. While diatoms may be able to adapt to the temperature and turbulence changes of climate change, coccolithophores may be able to adapt to the changing CO2 concentrations directly. It is clear that climate change will affect these organisms in complex and interacting ways, ways that we don't fully understand yet. Microbial eukaryotes are drivers of carbon cycling in the oceans and therefore will play a major role in global climate change. Their ability to contribute to carbon sequestration may mean that changes in these microbes will affect the course of climate change. Studying these organisms will be more crucial than ever in order to preserve their biodiversity, ecological importance, and the nutrient cycling services that they provide.